Well, good morning. Welcome back to the farm. It is a lovely spring morning here. So we're out on the swing set. Yes, I said spring. Yesterday was the first official day of spring here in the Northern Hemisphere. Northern Hemisphere is quite big. So what spring means to us is not the same as it means in California. That's for sure. So as you can tell, we've still got quite a bit of snow. Yesterday was an absolutely miserable day here. The wind blew and blew. We had three big snowstorms come through. And uh, yeah, wasn't, wasn't that great. We've got a couple of seedlings, a couple of trays actually of seedlings out in our greenhouse. When Carmen got home this morning, she went in there and checked the temperature. She said it was actually minus five in the greenhouse. I've had a heat lamp in there overnight, shining down on the plants. So I'm gonna go check those here in a bit. I'm hoping we haven't lost them, but uh, we also kind of knew. I mean, this is our first year with the greenhouse. We really weren't sure, you know, how effective it was gonna be. What does the external temperature need to be? What is the internal temperature going to be? So everything's an experiment. All right, so I'm about to go out and feed the cows and the sheep and the horses. So I need the tractor. As you can see, I've got the battery charger on there. I actually had this Optimate battery maintainer on there for the last two days and it came out this morning and it was still dead. So I think, I don't think that's a battery issue. I think that's, that's a charger issue. So that thing's probably toast. Fortunately enough, we do have another one, but I got the big charger on it right now. It's been on for about five, 10 minutes. So hopefully we should be able to go ahead, get this thing fired up out the door and get some round bales moving. So here goes nothing. So close. Well, since the tractor won't start, I figured it'd be a good time to come out to the horse pen, get them caught, because they're gonna need a bale here too. I'm just looking at Elsie here. You might wonder why Elsie's getting mysteriously fat. Well, she'll be running with Eeyore for quite some time. So I would say without a doubt, she's pregnant. We just don't know exactly when. I mean, we're thinking maybe end of May, beginning of June, something like that, she should be due. But I guess we'll see. So we'll be just, just get done lambing and then uh, we should have a baby miniature donkey on the ground. It'll be interesting to see the coloring because Elsie is a uh, chocolate brown, whereas Eeyore's, Eeyore's a, a flat gray. So that's gonna be, that's gonna make for some interesting colors for sure. Okay, so here I am now, I'm back in the greenhouse. This is the heat lamp I stole out of the chicken house. And uh, it's just pointed down at our seedlings. You'll see our temperature in here right now is 14 degrees Celsius. This morning, Carmen said that was at minus five. And when you come in and you feel around certain areas, there's still, there's still a draft, right? So I cracked open another can of foam and I'm just trying to seal up some holes here. And uh, it's, it's a lot warmer than I, when I first stepped in here. Not necessarily warmer, like temperature-wise, but uh, you know, there's not a cool breeze coming through. So I'm I'm hoping that uh, tomorrow morning it's going to be it's going to be above freezing in here. Well, now here we are with a slight change in plans. It's actually starting to snow. That's not the change of plans. I did get the tractor to start. Turns out we're almost out of diesel. So I'm just going to leave it there because can't can't afford to run out of diesel out in the field. So I'm gonna to run to town real quick, pick up three Jerry cans of diesel, and then we're gonna run over to Bloom Enterprises because we're actually out of molasses for the sheep too. So that'll be our Sunday afternoon drive. Miss Charlotte and I, we're gonna go for a tour, aren't we? Should we get a treat when we're in town? Yeah, we'll see if we can't find our little treat at the co-op, hey? So you're not gonna believe this. I drove all the way to town, <laughs> left my wallet at home. We drove all the way back home. Got my wallet now. We're gonna get that diesel, get some molasses, and see about getting Miss Charlotte an ice cream treat. Now then, we've had her ice cream. We've had her supper. We've even read a story about Grandpa Pig's birthday. Now it's time to get in the truck, get some diesel over the tractor, and get some bales out to the field. <laughs> all right, so I'm back in now. The sheep have their molasses, and I think we're gonna wrap the day up here. Today was one of those days where things just didn't really go according to plan, and that's fine, whatever. We have lots of those days. 
some folks think that, you know, there's, there's a system, you know, there's a method, that there's always a plan. Quite often, you know, at 8 a.m. I might have a list of things that I want to accomplish, but uh, quite often there's just, there's just no, there's just no plan. The day takes us where it takes us, right? And, you know, I'm happy to, I'm happy to enjoy it and experience whatever, whatever fate brings our way. But, you know, we've become kind of known for, you know, being, being the sheep guy or being the chicken guy. And I have lots of, lots of folks that come and ask questions, you know, in this situation, what would you do? Or I'm having this problem. How is this? Honestly, this was, you know, totally by accident. It never intended. Back in 2017, when we bought this place, there was, there wasn't really a plan. We were, you know, we initially thought, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to get cows or how's this going to look? And it wasn't until I went back to England that spring that, you know, there, the things just kind of, they just kind of happened. Right. So there was, there was a whole speech at my dad's funeral that was around sheep and my, my dad hated sheep or didn't hate sheep, but just wasn't really into sheep. And, and that kind of stuck with me. The other thing that happened, so, and it's actually four years today that this happened and that's what, that's why I'm telling the story. So while I was in England, I went and I visited all the places that, you know, really stuck with me during my childhood. And one of those places is Allenby. And if you've, uh, if you're not familiar with Allenby, you can Google it. It's a fantastic small little village uh, along the Solway Firth in, in Northern England. And there's a little ice cream shop there, Twentyman's ice cream shop. And <clears throat> they serve all kinds of different ice cream. So I had to go there four years ago today to get a chocolate mint ice cream with a flake bar put in it. I had my ice cream and then I was going to go to Keswick. And then from Keswick, I was going to go back to Carlisle. <clears throat> so we get down to Keswick. Fantastic. Try to try to get back to Carlisle. Roads closed. Bridges are out. Roads closed. You got to go. Got to figure out a different way. Uh, so I mean, it's at this point has been, you know, 17 years since since I left England. So you'll, they'll have to forgive me for not being too familiar with the back roads and the thoroughfares around, you know, in in Northern England. Kind of kind of forgotten my way. But I figure, well, you know, I w I want to go there, but I've got to go there. So eventually, if I loop my way around, I I can get there. If I go halfway to London and I come back, that's fine too. But I ended up going over Callback Common. Callback Common is like, a, like here in northern, northern Canada, northwestern Alberta, we would call this a grazing lease, essentially. But it's for sheep. So I'm out on Callback Common. I'm looking in the rearview mirror of the car, and I can see this gorgeous sunset happening. So I'm like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the car. I'm going to get out. I'm going to take a photo of this because this, this is like a memorable moment. I'm lost. I have no idea where I'm going. And uh, there's this beautiful sunset. There's probably a reason I'm here, right? The universe has just brought me to this moment and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna enjoy it for what it is. So I get out and I look around. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. I snap a couple of pictures and then I hear uh, like thundering. Like this is like, it sounds like a helicopter is coming into land. Just I'm like, what on earth is that noise? And I turn around and there's probably 200, maybe 300, I don't know, I didn't really get a chance to count, <laughs> Herdwick sheep thundering across Callback Common. So at this point, I don't know, like, are these, are these tame sheep? Are these friendly sheep? Or are these, you know, wild, feral sheep that just control all the back roads and, uh, you know... Like, I don't know what's going to happen here. I get, they get these giant horns and they're coming, the heads are down. And oh boy, I'm in a rental car. Like if I, if I get in the car to protect myself, they're going to ram the car. I'm going to lose my deposit. This is going to be a bad day. Anyways, I'm there. Things are happening for a reason. Let's see how this thing plays out. So anyways, a few seconds later, the thundering comes to a stop. The sheep all kind of gather around. And yeah, no, they're actually super friendly. They were chill. We took a photo together. It was, it was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was four years ago today. And now, now we have sheep. And, uh, and it's almost a source of therapy for me to go out there, spend some time with them, uh, you know, relive some of those enjoyable moments when, you know, maybe, maybe we was having a dark day and, uh, and something amusing like that happened. So yeah, anyways, that's the backstory you know, part two of why we have sheep. But on that note, I really do have to go get the eggs and then I'm gonna go inside and get myself a cup of tea. So I'll let you go for now. I hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.